So I'm going to start giving you a um, general introduction of visual language models. And this will be at least three parts. And um, the if you look at computer vision evolution, you know, typically we used to do traditional model where we put an image and we get some output. And for classification, object detection, and so on. And these were the kind of uh, neural networks. Uh, Lenet was very old one, first one, then LXNet and ResNet and VIT and all those things. So that's a traditional model of the computer vision. Okay, are you recording also? Now with the large language model, we are doing the visual language model. So we are doing the textual, the prompted models. So we have an image, but at the same time we have some the textual prompt. So that is the main difference. And that's what we are going to focus on. And for this, there are several different classes of models. CLIP, we discuss in detail. And there are many, many versions of CLIPS, then Flamingo, Poly, GPT-4, and so on. So that's where we stand. And I'm going to go through quickly uh, several of those. Um, so you might have heard also the word called foundation models. So this is actually a picture from NVIDIA blog. So it's a foundation, like you want to build a bridge or building, there's a foundation. So the foundation models, uh, they are trained on massive amount of data, because as you know, all the deep learning neural network models are trained on data. But if they are trained on a large lot of data, then they are called foundation model. At the same time, once they are trained on large amount of data, then we can actually adapt them by fine tuning on different downstream tasks. So that's kind of foundation model, which can work for several different things. So here's an example, again, uh, some figure from the NVIDIA blog. So you have data, you have images, you have a speech, you have the three, 3D signals and all kinds of things. You do the training, it goes foundation model. Then you can find you like, adapt to task of question answering, sentiment analysis, image captioning, object recognition, uh, instruction following, all those things. So that's kind of what the foundational models do. Um, so now foundation model and computer vision, there are different classes of those. So one is the textual prompted models and um, other are visually prompted models and third are combination of those others. So if you look at the textual prompted models, uh, we have contrastive, like clip is one example we talk about, they're generative, and we are going to talk about a Flamingo is a generative model and a hybrid, which is a combination of the uh, contrastive and generative. Uh, Koke um, is one, which we are going to talk about that. And the conversation model like video chat, GPT, Lava, and so on. Then we have visually prompted model. And one of the famous one is a segment everything, same, which was a big, uh, impactful. And there are lots of version of the same and so on. And we're going to talk about journalists, which is a painter model, um, which um, uh, is under this visually prompted models. Okay. And then there are these others, um, and like Palm E, which is specialized for embodied, like a uh, robotics. You know, the, uh, and if you want to build this model for robots, then you not only have to have input as image and language, but at the same time, some output for the robots to manipulate, to change their joint angles and so on, and help to navigate and all those kind of things. So there are different architecture styles. So simplest model is called dual encoder. So your image encoder, your text encoder, like a clip, okay? And your last contrast learn you learn. Then um, there are these, uh, uh, fusion, so you still have image encoder and text encoder, but then you have fusion decoder, and then you have last on the top of it. So, for example, Koke is the one model we have discussed, which is falls under this. Um, then we have the encoder decoder model, where we have in, input image encoder, text encoder, and that combine text encoder, and then you have decoder, and you have last on the top of it. So on that one, Pali is one, we're going to talk about that. And the finally, we have adapted LM model. So where we have image encode, 
encoder and text input, and we have LLM, which go directly to large language model, and we will have the loss on the top of it, and we're gonna talk about Flamingo, and we'll talk about also um, Blip2, okay? So these are different architecture uh, about the visual language models. So with that, um, what is it? So I'm going to go through several of these models. Again, my presentation will be very general to give you a feeling of all these models. Then we are going to go into detail when we discuss the papers. So we'll talk about Koke, which is a contrastive and captioning, uh, Polly and Flamengo, Flava, Painter, and then we look into Blip2, which is kind of a special model, which is the X-Farmer to extract the information from the image based on the text prompt. And we'll talk about also image bind um, and also language bind. So the clip is like you bind image with the text, but in this image bind, you can bind image with lots of other modalities. And the language bind, you bind with the language. And that's pretty interesting, uh, different ways to learn these models. We are, we are gonna discuss that. Um, so Lava is the one of the first uh, visual language model. We will go through that. And Video Chat GPT, which is a video model, because most of these are images, uh, inputs image and text, but Video Chat GPT, one of the first model uh, where the input is a video in the text. Okay, um, so let's look at the Koke, which is the contrastive uh, captioners or image text foundation models. Okay, so uh, this was last year in uh, 2022. And uh, so the idea is again, very simple. So we have very similar to the clip model. So you, on the left, you see the image encoder, the input is an image to that. And then on the right side, we have decomposed this text decoder in two parts. One is unimodel, which will kind of serve like a text encoder as we are doing in, in the clip. Then we have the green, uh, blue part, which is the multimodal text decoder, where we are getting input not from only text, but also from the image and we'll do the cross attention. So we will have these two losses. One will be the simple contrastive and other will be the captioning loss. And I'm gonna discuss that. So, which is shown here. So if you look at on the right side, uh, image goes, we have these tokens, the pages, code image encoder. We get the output of the transformer uh, image encoder. And on the right side, we have the sentence, the two dogs running in a field. And then we will encode these words, beginning of sentence, end of sentence, and then we'll go to text uh, decoder. Now, what comes out that we will have CLS token from the image and CLS token from the text, and uh, we'll do contrast learning, very similar to the what we did clip. Up to here, it's like a clip, but now, we will go to the multimodal text decoder where we will have two inputs. One will be the input from the image and other will be the input from the, uh, the text decoder. So we'll get cross attention, okay? We do the cross attention between these two and the output will come the caption. So given an image and this multimodal de text decoder will give us the output two dogs running in a feed. So that's the idea. So now if you look at these losses for the dual decoder encoder contrast loss, very similar, exactly same as the as a clip loss. So this is image of text, the first one. My cursor doesn't work, I think it will work here. So we will do the cross, um, um, the cosine similarity between that for each of these pair of X, the image and text, and we normalize, and similarly, this is text image. So that's the our contrastive. And this is the decoder captioning. So we are given the um, image X and the words up to a time less than T. Then we want to predict what's the next word at T. 
Okay, so this is we want to come up with the probability of word at time t based on what the words we have seen up to that, up to less than t. And uh, we will do this for all, all of the time from one to uppercase t. And this is our loss. Okay, and uh, we will just add up these two losses, contrasted loss and capturing loss with some, you know, fusion parameters, lambdas, and that's the way we train. So that is our coke losses. And uh, so once we train this, now we can use this for several different tasks, okay? First will be, we can just take the image encoder and use it for image classification because we have learned this good image encoder. Then we can add on the top of it the classifier and we can use it. And as we did for the clip, then we can use also for the uh, text to image retrieval or image to text retrieval in this case here. So we have this image, we get embedding, and we want to retrieve the text corresponding to that. Or we can have a text, and we want to retrieve the images which are similar to that text. So text to image retrieval, you type, type say some phrase, and you can find out all the possible images that they are there, find the match, image of the base, that's your result. So that's the uh, zero short image text to you because <laughs> we have trained this on this data set, but we can, once these are trained, then we can use it for any other data set. So that's the called zero short. There's no supervision needed. We need a zero example, okay? So that's the idea. We can also use this for the image captioning. So we have an image, we want to find out a captioning, captions of that image. So that is application of this uh, also model. So there are different ways we can use this. So they use this um, to train this model for JFT 3 billion data set. Remember we were talking about VIT. For VIT, they use a 300 million JFT. Okay, but now this is a three billions, lot more. And uh, they use the 30,000 label um, and wave scale alternative text data. So alternate text data is that you have an image, you want to, if suppose the image is missing, then you write down the text which can describe it. That's called alternate text. So it's like a caption. So now this can also be used for the video. So what they do, take the different frames of the video. For each frame, we do the image encoder and we just combine them as a representation of that particular video. And they get pretty interesting results. So you will see this kind of uh, diagram. They call what radar diagram or something. What is this called? This yeah. radar diagram. Okay, so you'll see this, it looks very fancy because you can convey lots of things in this. So one is that we are showing the performance on many different problems, different data set, okay? So if you look at, so here we are talking about the ImageNet zero shot and ImageNet this, uh, and then Connectic, which is the action recognition, 600, 400, okay? Then MS Coco, zero shot. Now, <laughs> this is the image to text retrieval. This is the text image retrieval. Then there's a Flickr 30K, which is image to text and text to image, and VQA, visual question answering, and these two other problems. So they are showing the results for the Coke, as you see, uh, and all these things is doing pretty well. Then this is SOTA, which means a state of art, which is the shown in the um, in the SOTA is shown in the somehow uh, yellow. I, I don't see the good color here. And then you have other one. So you can there's a nice visualization to compare the results from different data set, different problems, and compare different methods. So as you see, the outside is the Coca, which works pretty well. Okay, yes. Uh, metric. metric for every different uh, problem, there are different metrics. And uh, you, like, I don't know, like, 
that one's over a hundred. Yeah, yeah. So it's you know it's it's different. Uh, some classification, some uh, kind of captioning laws, and a lot of things. So you will learn that. So, but is this is just uh, showing the numbers which people report in papers? You just compare with that. So they talk when talk about how you compute the matrix. You learn that. Okay. So, um, so these two data sets, which you may not be familiar, one is this, um, the S NLI and the NLBRT. So this is the uh, one is called visual entailment data set. So what they do are taking an image and they have hypothesis. So one is that two women are holding packages. Other hypothesis, sisters are hugging goodbye while holding to go packages after just eating lunch. Other is men are fighting outside the tent. Okay. So then the system has to either say it's entailment, like a kind of description, or say it's a neutral, or there's a contradiction. So as you see that the last one is contradiction, there's no men. So the system has to be able to recognize cells the difference based on image, which is you know pretty amazing that computer can do that. So that's one. The other one is that here we'll give these pair of images, and there will be a description. The left image contains twice the number of dark as the right image, and at least two darks in in total are you know standing. So here you will have the caption with two images and the task is predict if caption is true or false. So that's another task data set and they have compared with that. So that was the first paper, the coke, And the idea was to build upon a clip, which just uses contrastive. Now you want to put the captioning. Captioning means input the image, you want to come up with a describe the image. It's a language output. But you know, the in the in the in the clip, we just train this and we can use the the uh, image encoder separately and the text encoder separately and join the space and so on. So they went further as you see that clip we just have one loss, contrast loss. Here you have two losses and they combine two losses. And of course they can show the results on uh, many different problems and which is which is good. Okay, so let's do one more. Uh, it's called Pali. And um, is Pali stand for Pathways Language and Image Model. And um, it performs the image only and language only and image plus language tasks, okay? So the good thing about this is it uses many languages, not only English, okay? So, uh, which is um, good. And that system is very simple. So you have the image and you have the text. So first uh, you take an image, get the VIT, and now you have transformer encoder and decoder. So the encoded image go to transform encoder and also the text encoded code to transform encoder, then your decoder, you come up with the language. Like this is sunflower. Answer in English, what type of flowers are in the buckets? Okay, so it is a 4 billion parameters VIT it uses. So it's a, you know, high level, um, you know, more powerful VIT, they call it VIT-E. And it uses some kind of uh, T5, which is the text model, from Google and 13 billion parameters text model. And uh, they use this web, web lead 10 billion data set. And it is cover 100 different languages. Okay. And uh, 10 billion images and 10 billion of image text pairs. Um, so now this model is trained on many different losses. So we saw Koke losses, only two losses, captioning loss and contrast loss. Here they're trained on eight different losses and we are going to 
discuss in detail when we do discuss this paper. Okay, so um, so the results uh, they can show image captioning, multilingual captioning, visual question answering, cross-lingual and multilingual VQA, and zero-shot image classification. Um, so, for example, here. So, given an input image, generate the all alt text in English. So, say sailor filled with uh, bells of wine. And another example, generate um, the text in English, output clock on a building that says whatever that says, and, and so on. So, helicopter. And you can also look at different languages here, say in the French and some other languages, I think Chinese or something, and, and so on. So these are the capabilities of this Pali um, approach, okay? So um, so maybe we can um, do one more, uh, which is the Flamengo. And um, so here we have, so as, as we, Talk about that. Yeah, go ahead. So uh, the, the palm paper basically looked like they just, uh, if you look at the Copa paper, they could have just fine tuned their paper to the poly paper, right? E, what do you mean fine tune? I mean, like, uh, mm -hmm. they just extended the data set to use. Yeah. Things. But here in this poly paper, they are using many different, um, different losses, right? So that's the main difference that they will have captioning loss on different data set, OCR, OCR text, English and cross-lingual, but because the COCA was only English, okay? And English cross-lingual question answering, it wasn't trained on question answering and so on. English only object aware, object detection. So but there that, are many- That's what I was saying, like the question answering part, you could have just fine tuned the data set to add some question answering. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, that's in a way generally is true because all these are kind of solving similar problems, right? Depending yeah. on like what is the, uh, you know, what is your, uh, you know, model like it's only two tower, like image encoder, text encoder, you know, do that. Or uh, you have the decoder also, text is output, and you have a you know, different version, you fuse the first and then you output. So that's one. Second is what are the losses you are losing, okay? And third is what data set you, you are applying, right? Different data set, different quality and so on. So all these are the distinguishing things. Of course, these methods in research are there. Whenever you want to publish a paper, you want to, even if you want to solve exactly the same problem, you want to show why this paper should be published. So you want to show improvement, as I showed you on Poke, they are comparing with other other methods. So that's the main idea, that while either you solve a problem, it's completely new, nobody has done that, okay? So in a way, CLIP was one of the models, you know, the real simple intuitive method using image and text pair, contrastive, and that to start a lot of work. Okay, uh, most of the time that you solve the known problem, but you have new things. And what are the new things? So either you come up with some method that performs better. So always when you get the review of paper, they want to see why this paper should publish. Say, so, well, okay, this performed better on all the metrics. So that's why it's important to look at all the metrics, what they mean and so on. Okay. Other is that while well, what is the innovation? Okay. So you can do little tricks and so on. Um, maybe you can get good performance, right? You are a good coder and so on. The heck. But what's the science after that? Right. So you want to say, well, what's it? What's new thing? Come on, I don't know. So that's uh, another thing. So then third thing is that while well, you are, of course, using the bigger model, a lot of parameters, a lot of data set, you know, data set collection coming with, you know, the data set is a big effort and you can actually get a paper just on data set. 
So New Rips is the one of the most prestigious conference in, in deep learning, right? They have a whole track on data sets. Because of deep learning, is a data set, so good data set, curated data set is very important. So all these things you have to keep in mind, right? Because research does not progress, it's just you know, one thing you have to look at. It's very different ball game. See that we came up with, you know, more than 10 years ago, UCF 101 data set, one of the most famous data set on action recognition. Everybody uses, right? So so the idea was that before that, there were very simple actions that person will make some action when they record one individual person. So, so we say, well, these are unrealistic. So let's look at the action, the wire. So we went to YouTube and got these action. We started 11 actions on. Then we extended to 50 action. We see a 50. Then you see a 101 now, it's a, one of the benchmark and built upon that. There's other data set as you see connected, which is 400, then the connected 600. So that's the way the you know, research progresses. Okay, any other question? I don't want to go to the next one. A few, yeah. few more points. Yes. So where does the mean come from? Like categories. Where yeah, that... yeah. So I mean, that's you know, that's another thing. So you want to, when you want to um, <clears throat> write a paper. So you can say that, well, we have this new method, uh, talk about what loss and so on. But it is, um, doesn't become that known. They say, well, uh, Simit et al. did a paper from Google, which does it. So now the tradition is to come up with acronym for your method. So everybody knows it's, uh, it's a poly, it's a you know, cocaine, so on. So you can come up with any name. So we have a paper last year in Europe's called GeoClip. So GeoClip works for geolocalization. So it's like that. Yeah. Okay. Yes, please. For the con uh, contrastive models, uh, mm -hmm. so like you use like one image and you'll have text mm -hmm. one wrong. Mm -hmm. Is like effort put to make sure every token in the wrong text doesn't fit. Like if it was dog in the grass, uh, the text said like cat in the grass, like grass could still apply to it. So it's like, <laughs> are they hand picking the text in that match or? Yeah, yeah. So that's also a good, um, good question. So see the, in the um, clip right now, it's very coarse level or image level. So well, there's a dog in the grass and so on. So, depending on the annotation, whatever the caption you are using, it will learn that. But if you want to distinguish between, you know, dog with different background and cat with different background, then you have to do more than that. Is that what your question was? I think so. Yeah. So, so it's a, it's a, you know, you can, you can use a clip for retrieval as these guys are showing, but it's very challenging. It doesn't, you know, as I gave an example, I think last time, so like um, airplane, right? So you have airplane, the clip may learn how to retrieve airplane, but if you put the airplane landing, airplane taking off, and airplane crashing, and airplane with people, so it may get confused. So you have to be more finer level learning, because right now it's a very coarse level image learning. Okay, one last question. So any question from the from the virtual class? I don't know if I can hear them. Um it's even the cursor doesn't work. Um any question? Text. Huh? Nobody has put in the text, but they can put in the Nobody's talking? No, no, okay. No questions on my end. Okay, thank you. Yeah, this is amazing uh, how the things are. Who can see?